Out here we've got uh, a yield test site, and so uh, what we're testing out there is uh, um, hybrids that are were just developed um, uh, for the breeding program, all the way up through hybrids that uh, you could see out in uh, show plots and in your field next year. So, are any of these varieties like are these like finished product varieties? We have the whole pipeline out here, and so we've got things that are our first year hybrid testing uh, in the within the breeding program, all the way through to. Uh, the DP uh, department level testing of, of R1 through R5. If you look at something, it's a, a breeding cross uh, being made, you know, developing a new breeding population that's segregating for uh, whatever traits uh, you've got. Mm -hmm. um, from that stage all the way up through commercialization, you're looking at uh, seven years minimum. Um, and that, you know, that, that includes a number of years of, uh, of wide scale hybrid testing as well as the impact testing that's even broader. In recent years even, we're doing a lot more with uh, molecular markers. Mm -hmm. And so we're able to widen the funnel and uh, really not necessarily field test a lot of uh, inbreds, mm -hmm. but we can predict which ones are going to perform better in our target environments. I mean, what is it you're finding, you know, when you say the fail rate is like half get tossed right out? What are you seeing like in the genetic markers and composition? What, what, is, what looks bad? It's not like you can, like, can you actually, right. do you have the genetic markers down to like where you can see like, oh, this thing is gonna be so susceptible to like, you know, frog eye leaf spot or something, or what, what is it that you see that gets them kicked out? Yep, so we're able to predict a, a, a large number of traits at this point, you know, looking at the, the standards of uh, yield and moisture. Uh, for me in particular, uh, my breeding program tends to uh, try to pull up as much yield out of the uh, breeding programs to my south. Mm -hmm. uh, and so what I'm selecting for a lot is, is moisture and ad adaptability to the South, uh, south Dakota environments. But we've got uh, the ability to predict uh, plant and ear height, uh, various diseases, just uh, in those and, genetic markers, you yep. can already tell like that. Uh. Yep, exactly. And along with uh, root and uh, root stocks, uh, brittle snap as well. Hmm. Uh, so those are all in my list of list of traits to be looking at. That's impressive. Uh, this is kind of the uh, the newest revolution as far as uh, data collection within the research plots. And so we've been using uh, uh, drones for uh, probably three to four years, pretty consistently now. I mean, what is your goal of this? Is it finding weak spots or what is it trying to we find? We use these for, uh, for data collection on an individual plot basis. And so we're, you know, we're leading the industry in, in our ability to precisely generate data on a, on a really a small plot. Oh. And so our locations will get uh, flown probably uh, four to five times throughout the year, uh, collecting various data points. So we're, we're capturing all this data throughout the year too, and that helps uh, us arrive at the at the high quality Pioneer hybrids that we're able to release. So what do you get like, what are some of the things you've picked up on already just in these little plots that you saw like, you know, come up that you, like a problem or a disease or something that you noticed? I mean, anything and everything or? Yeah, you know, you can, uh, you can sit and look at images all day looking at different plots and we've got images of tens of thousands of plots and so you can uh, definitely see the range of things. But usually we're going out here to fly to uh, capture a specific data point. These are all double haploids um, that I've been looking at throughout the summer. Okay. Uh, and it actually goes another ways up to that, uh, that uh, big alley up there. And so uh, we have, we're evaluating so many lines that we actually uh, put them in really small plots. I was, so like, can... is this literally a break? Like... Yep, yep. It's a, a different inbred in each range. There's your seed packet. Yeah. That's good. <laughs> so, and, and in a lot of these, um, you know, these are the first time that some of these inbreds are being looked at. Mm -hmm. And for a lot of them, it's going to be the last time. They'll, you know, never see the light of day again. All this effort for, what, yeah, four numbers a year, maybe, yeah. <laughs> maybe, that's on a good year. Like, that's, I yeah. mean, that should show you those four numbers are just like the bee's knees. Right, right. With as many varieties as you have, are you even, you're, are you basically trying every combo imaginable for those crosses? Or I mean, are yeah. you actually during the winter months? Definitely like, not. No, we, the, you're trying to like hand pick what you think is. Yeah, oh, okay. exactly, exactly. So uh, with, with molecular markers now, we're actually able to predict performance before we even make the breeding cross. Mm -hmm. And so we're, you know, picking the best of the best as far as which crosses get made. And then which crosses we actually bring into our breeding programs and uh, generate uh, segregating material out of. Surprised how many rejects there are and how many how many seeds or duds if you want to call it it takes to get to a finished product that it's not just a hundred or two hundred seeds that get down to four it's the thousands upon tens of thousands to get to the level we're at here. It's very easy to see how the research team helps us out. I mean anything from the corn falling down to any of the diseases I mean 
knowing that that has been looked at precisely and studied for years before it hits my farm means a lot. So yeah, it's very, very important. I think this kind of experience is really good for any neighbor who wants to advance a little further. You know, we're really trying to push the upper end of what the yield potential is and seeing the small details that are paid attention to here and the effort that's put into it and really what we're getting for our money I think is well worth the experience for anybody who's interested in that.